changing up the videos a little bit. Um, I'm still working on the the bandsaw, but um, with the holidays and uh, also getting over a bout of the nasty, nasty, nasty flu, um, which is why my voice is still a little bit hoarse. And if I start hacking like a 90-year-old man with emphysema, I apologize. But uh, I have to uh, wait for the uh, the metal I ordered for the uh, hand wheels that I'm going to make to come in. I didn't have any aluminum that was big enough. And uh, I'm going to be going on vacation pretty soon, getting out of here, going someplace nice and warm. Sick of the snow already, even though we haven't had much. But um, So I was in the middle of cleaning up the shop, and I decided to make throw together a couple of videos here. Um, and this one, it's something that you don't really think about, and it's something that really isn't touched upon anywhere, honestly. Um, the... You, your, your tools, your high-speed steel tools, they magnetize themselves from the friction after a while. Um, I've got two here. Let's see if we can zoom in on these. This is um, a, I believe this is 5 sixteenths. Yeah, it's a 5 sixteenths tool bit, and this is a quarter inch, uh, that little boring bar that I made. Uh, this is just a cup of some chips. There's some aluminum in here though, but this is nice and dry. These chips are dry. You can see we're magnetized. You know, as you're turning and your tools are getting a fur coat, your tool bits are magnetized. Great for a screwdriver holding little screws. Horrible for these. It just you'll tend to you know roll a chip and kind of ruin your surface finish. And also it'll just be annoying because you get a big chunk of fuzz on the tip and not be able to see what the hell you're doing. So we're going to demagnetize these. Now they sell commercial demagnetizers. Um, electric ones that you would plug in, press a button, demagnetize your stuff that way. They also sell the little manual ones which basically look like a little block that have two square holes cut into it and there's a magnet inside and one says magnetize, demagnetize. You run your stuff back and forth through them and it'll either magnetize or demagnetize. Those suck. Don't even buy them. They're seven bucks, not even worth the seven bucks unless you want to sit there and use it on your refrigerator to hold up paper. That's about the only thing it's good for. Now, we're going to make our own elect electric one. Why? Because I had the stuff to do it. I'm a cheap bastard. So, what I had, there are two ways to do this. And they're relatively accessible to the normal person. It's easier for me just because I work in the refrigeration trade. So, all this stuff is freely available to me. And I do have used pots floating around. Now, one option, which a lot of people like, but I do not like, is to use a solenoid coil. What this is, is th this particular one is from a, um, a walk-in cooler. This sits on top of a, uh, a rod in a refrigeration line and there's a little plunger inside that goes up and down controlled by this coil in here. This coil can actually, um, you, you can slide it out and see it here. It's just a housing, that's the coil. Now these will work. The, on, the, only, the only thing with these here, um, let's see if we can zoom into this here a little bit. The hole in this really isn't that big. I mean, there's your 5.6, it's about 3 eighths in diameter. And the other thing is too, is if there is nothing inside this, which it seems counterintuitive, but if there is nothing inside this, the magnetic field goes out of control. Um, I don't know the principles behind it, but it does. And what will happen is, is you actually melt this. Um, you would only be able to run this like 5-10 seconds at a time uh, before you actually start to burn the windings in this. Um, that's why in, in the trades and everything you can't start a coil unless it's on the actual valve itself. You'll just burn it out. Um, so I don't particularly like these. But what I do like, and what does work, is these are called Oh, they, these are, um, you can get them at uh, refrigeration supply houses also if you have a dead washing machine, dishwasher, the, the water inlet valves have these in them. You can scavenge the parts from a, uh, a dead household refrigerator too. Um, same thing with this. You, you can get these from a household refrigeration, refrigerator. This is called the shaded pole motor. Um, and all it is is just a little open winding motor here. And it has a, uh, the, the rotor inside here and your magnetic field is generated by these plates um, across here and it just turns the shaft. This one's dead. I had replaced it from a, a uh, 
I had taken it out of a uh, uh, commercial refrigerator. Uh, I had replaced it. The the actual winding itself is good, just the little bronze bearings in here are junk. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to show you why. Um, again, these these you can get out of a household refrigerator that is dead. You can also go to any refrigeration supply house and find them. Uh, they're about 20 bucks a pop. They're labeled um, the, the the generic replacement ones that'll fit everything. They come in a kit. They're called EM670 motors. That's what they're known by if you have to get them. But what we're going to do is we're going to take all the uh, these two plates off to expose just the actual winding. All the windings down here, but the actual um, part that creates the magnetic field. Name escapes me at the moment. There's your rotor, and there is your winding. Now you can see how big that hole is in there. Now you can use any hole that's in this to demagnetize even these little small ones here and here. Um, if you want, you can also slit this right down the middle and make a notch. The only thing you can't do is hit these copper uh, lines here and there's another set here. You don't want to do those. You just want to cut through. If you're going to make a slot to be able to slide your tool in like this instead of having to pass it through, um, you just want to make sure you don't hit these. Otherwise, when you plug it in, big pop, a little blind for a second, scare the shit out of yourself. So let me uh, wire this up real quick. Also, if you're not comfortable with wiring, uh, you know, by all means buy a commercial one. This is only going to be temporary wandering. I don't, I, 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 this is just for demonstration. I don't suggest you do it like this and leave it like this. Um, I'm just going to use a old uh, lamp extension cord. Now it doesn't matter way, which way you wire these, these, these motors are not polarized, um, so it doesn't really matter what wire goes where. Now you will have the same problem with the, uh, as you do with the solenoid coil. Uh, these are not built to be run with nothing inside of them, um, so you will overheat them after a while but it's not nearly as critical as the uh, solenoid coil itself. Now this here also, um, you could wire a momentary push button, so you just hold it down, pass your tool bit through, let go, and you're done. I have, I'm gonna have this hooked up to, or this um, cord here has a little remote switchy that I'm gonna use, so. Um, let me find the other end of this and plug it in. <coughs> going to stand this up here. Now what we want to do is put the tool inside here. You can feel the magnetism on it. Let me see if I can get it to hold itself up. Well, not really, but I can feel it pulling against. You can see it's stuck to that side there. Let me see if I can zoom in. So you want to hold it right in the middle of that hole, 
give it some power, you'll feel it want to, you'll feel it pull. I can feel the magnetic field, that's why it's making it jiggle. Hold it there for about 10 seconds. Slowly remove it in one direction, all the way out, keep going out about five feet away, shut it off. Now we should have demagnetize our tool. There you go. Now, with this one, I'll zoom out and I'll show you. All right, ready? We're in the middle. Switch on. Now, it it's going to vibrate the tool. You're going to feel when you turn it on. In other words, it, it, you're going to feel the magnetic fields. And you, if you're not perfectly in line, you're going to get vibration of the tool. It's going to feel like... Um, I don't, it, it, I'm assuming most of you have been electrocuted at some point in your life. I mean, I know as a kid, I stuck a fork in a socket just to see what happened. Um, you'll, you'll think you're being electrocuted, but you're not. So, turn it on. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Slowly pull out one direction all the way. Keep going so you get about five, six feet away. Then, shut it off. Now this one, also demagnetized. Now you can also use this in the opposite direction. Now, my battery just ran out, but we're going to do the opposite. We're going to magnetize something. So this is, um, now it, it's weird because some alloys magnetize a lot better than others. So obviously the, your, your best alloy to, to be able to magnetize is going to be your uh, plain steels um, that that other garbage the chrome plated tools and stuff like that they don't they don't magnetize nearly as good as just a plain steel screwdriver or that chrome vanadium BS all that crap um, this one is already magnetized somewhat you can see everything sticking to it so um, I'm gonna demagnetize it real quick same way you can see in there so I have it in the middle there I'll wait about 10 seconds or so slowly pull out and shut off now we should be demagnetized which we are now to magnetize the way you magnetize everything is there all the the um, the electrons have to be going in the same direction when you have it in the middle like this you have opposing magnetic fields from these two coils here so it scrambles everything that's why you got to keep it in the middle so to um, magnetize we want to actually clip it directly to one of those uh, magnetic field generating doohickeys so um, I'm not exactly sure if it matters which one I will just choose the top so turn it on and we'll let the screwdriver just get attracted to that hold it there about 15 seconds or so Now, without with, without withdrawing it, just shut the power off, and we'll disconnect. Now we should be magnetized, which you can see we are. And that's how you uh, magnetize and demagnetize stuff on the cheap. This cost me absolutely nothing. It'll probably cost you if you can't find an old old motor like this. Probably. Oh, at most maybe 15 20 bucks um, those commercial demagnetizers I've seen cost you in the neighborhood of um, I actually I've seen them as high as 75 bucks 100 bucks 120 bucks I've also seen um, the little crappy uh, import ones which I hear are pretty bad um, those sell for like 20 25 bucks um, but I mean, it's all up to you. It's just just something to be aware of that these tools will magnetize themselves after a while, and um, you're gonna have to demagnetize them at some point. So that's the easiest way to do it, and uh, works pretty well. So I'm gonna do all the other tools that I have and uh, get cleaning up the shop here before I go on vacation.